I now want to give a demonstration of how to do the modeling in Excel. Right, so this should help um, with any confusion you might have on, on exactly what we're looking for. So here's the simulation, and I've already got the um, elements set to the values stated in the lab report. So um, we've got the resistor set to 9.9 .9 kilo ohms. We've got the 50 microfarad capacitor and we've got the 10 volt battery. Now notice, okay, that when the capacitor is uncharged, it doesn't have any voltage across it. So that's what the 0.000 volts uh, is there. And then the um, resistor doesn't have any potential across it either. And that's just because no current's flowing when the switch is open. So what we're gonna see is when we close the switch, we should see current start to flow. And what we wanna do is we're gonna track the voltage across the capacitor. So what's gonna happen is as the current flows through the circuit and the charge on the plates gather, charges are drawn off of one side of the plate leaving positive charge and an equivalent amount of negative charge is deposited on the other plate. As that process happens, um, the potential across the capacitor will grow. All right, so that's what we're gonna see. Now, in the instructions, uh, it says to take uh, measurements every um, like 0 0.051 seconds. I'm gonna take time intervals shorter than that, but you'll still see how to build your model nonetheless. So uh, we'll, we'll take it at whenever, because this is slowed down, by the way. This clock is not running at uh, um, one second per second. So um, we'll, it, it, I don't know exactly what the conversion is, but it's not one second per second. So um, the clock on the simulation is not running in real time. It's slowed down. So we're watching this in slow motion. All right, so when I close the switch, and we'll wait till this goes to about 0 0.02 seconds, so maybe right there, okay? So if I have a charging time of 0 0.019, now again, you use your tables in the value at least as close as you can by clicking in the simulation, right? You might not stop the clock at exactly 0 0.051, just get close, right? But for our purposes, so I'm gonna have a time, well at zero, there was no potential across the capacitor. And um, at time of 0 0.019, I have a potential of 0.379 volts. All right, and so then we'll just continue this process uh, for maybe another 0 0.02 seconds. Okay, so 0 0.041, I'm at 0 0.802 volts, and Zero point zero six one. I'm at one point one five six volts. And again, okay. So I'm going to be at zero point zero eight one and 1.506. And so you can see that the um, voltage is getting higher, but the increment um, in each time interval should actually be decreasing some, right? That's, that's what we should be noticing. So I'm gonna do maybe three or four more of these, and I'm at exactly 0.1, and I'm at 
and 0 0.12, I'm at 2.154, and we'll do one more for good measure. All right, so at one, or at 0.14 rather, I'm at 2.457. Okay, so now, uh, what I want to do, okay, is first things first, let's plot this. And remember, let's remind ourselves, this is the potential across the capacitor, so I'm expecting some sort of curve that looks like this, okay? It'll rise somewhat sharply and then start to level off, right? So that's what we're expecting. And this might not be all that extreme. Uh, in fact, this actually looks linear, as a matter of fact. Right, because we're capturing such a small time span. Uh, if I plot and fit this with a linear trend, yeah, that, that linear trend fits it very well, but that's not what we want to do, okay? That's not what we want. Um, the way to actually evaluate this, okay? The way to actually evaluate this is to build a model, okay? So the model, remember, is given by this equation right here. Um, actually really by this one. So this is what we're going to plot. So what I need is the time constant. I need the RC value. Okay, I need this RC value. Right here. And I'm going to make this a function of time. So E is the exponential number. Okay, and in Excel, here's how you do this. So the model says take the voltage of the battery and take the product of 1 minus e to the negative t over rc for that. So here's what I've done. I've got my r value and my c value. So this is often, the rc value is often called the time constant or tau. So uh, the Greek letter tau. So I'm going to refer to this as tau, and I'm going to let this equal r times c. OK? So this is effectively 0.495, right? Uh, 4.95 times 10 to the negative 1 is 0.495. All right. Now I also need the initial voltage of the battery, and that's 10. So here in the model, now I'm going to type this equation. So this is going to be equal to, any time you have equal to that Excel knows a formula is coming, so equal to the initial voltage of the battery times the quantity 1 minus the exponential number, exp. So I need exp to the negative t divided by RC, and then close up both of those parentheses, okay? Um, now, here's the thing, okay, or at least one of the things. I need this to be constant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this in dollar signs, wrap the letter of your cell around with dollar signs that will keep that constant. And then I need RC to be constant because it doesn't change. So I wrap the, the letter in dollar signs with that. So now I'm gonna calculate a number and that number will, um, it, for this one, it should be zero. Um, actually, you know what? I'm not sure I need the carrot there. Let's do that. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Yeah. So you don't need the carrot. When when you have exp uh, with the parenthesis, it automatically is raising the exponential number to that power. I forgot about that. So we 
we have this, okay? So what you wanna do now, what you would wanna do is now plot the new data time on one axis and the positions or, or the new uh, prediction voltages on the other axis. And what you want to do is not use dots for both because you won't be able to see anything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the series chart type. And you'll notice these are both scatter plots and I'm going to change the second series type to be lines. So now you can see how the model, the model is the yellow line and how it fits with the measured, okay? Now, for this, it's hard to see that a linear trend line wouldn't work because when I put a linear trend line on here, it's pretty darn good, right? But it's not linear and here's how we can tell this. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, come back into the simulation. Okay, I'm going to come back into the simulation and I'm going to let this go for uh, a longer time. So now we're going to go for maybe 0.5 seconds at a time. So here we'll just go up to uh, 0.2 seconds. You don't have to go this far, okay? You only need to do the data points on the, on the report, but this is just to show that this is in fact not linear. So 0 0.2, and I was at, whoops, 3.348. Uh, okay. And, uh, We'll let this go to maybe 0.4. Um, no, we'll let it go to 0 0.3. 0 0.292, and I'm at 4.458. Let it go to 0.4, or in this case, 0.399. You'll notice that the measured and modeled values are sticking very close to one another, right? They're sticking really close to one another, which is which is good, right? That's what we want. That's the behavior we want. Okay, so 0.5 seconds, and we're at 6.357, 0 0.6 seconds, So 0 0.6, 
7.023. And by the way, I'm going to go ahead and format these cells to be general numbers. So that way we can compare apples to apples. And 0.8, all right. One and we're at eight point three eight. Oop, eight point three eight. Okay, so first things first, right? First things first. Notice that now we're really starting to see the rate at which our voltages are changing with uh, relatively constant time increments is slowing down, right? So when we went from 4.4 seconds to 0.5 seconds, we had a shift, shift in voltage of about 0.82. And now from 0.8 to 0.9 seconds, we have a change in voltage of about 0.376, okay? So the change in, in our, the amount of change our voltage is experiencing across the capacitor is decreasing with time. Okay. Am I at 10 exactly? 1.001. 1, 1. Um, 8.001. Okay. And notice how my um, model value is automatically updated, right? Excel is, is smart sometimes. So I'm actually going to get rid of this plot. Um, and now I'm going to plot this. And we actually should now see more of this kind of behavior. It won't be that extreme, but you'll, you should detect it now. And there we go, right? So now, right, my first several data points were down here, and this looked really linear, but now you can see that this is definitely not linear. So if I add a linear trend line through this, now you can see that that just doesn't look good, right? It doesn't look good, and even though it's R squared value is still pretty good, 0.95, it's just not that great, right? So this is not a linear trend, so I'm gonna get rid of that trend line. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing I did before. I'm going to um, select data and I'm gonna add. And my X values are gonna be my time. My Y values are going to be the model. And 
again, now you can see how well they lie right on top of each other, but I don't want that. I want to see the actual interaction. So I'm going to format the, uh, whoop, I didn't want to format the data series. I want to format the plot type or the chart type. So change chart type. Um, I don't know. Oh, let me try this. No. Change series chart type. So you might have to hover over a data point. And I'm going to change the second one to uh, be a line. And so now you can see how um, the model fits the experimental data. So the experimental data or the measured data are your blue dots. Your model is the solid line. And what this is telling you is that the data, the blue dots, are fitting our prediction. So essentially our model is a prediction. Okay, So our model is a prediction based on this equation. We're, we're asking ourselves, is that equation true? And the data are saying, yes, yes it is. Okay, Because the data uh, fit the model very well. Right? So that is what you're doing with this assignment. Now again, you don't need to take this many data points. Just take the number of data points at the, uh, as close as you can to the specified times. Okay, But this is the process. So when you build your model, what you're doing is you're taking the values of your constants, your V, R, and C, and plugging them into a formula that's in a, a function of time and that function of time matches the prediction of the voltage of the battery times the quantity 1 minus e to the negative time divided by rc. Okay, So hopefully that clears uh, any confusion you have up. If you need anything else, just let me know. If you have any questions, let me know. And we will talk to you later.